At Dickens Heath Primary School in Solihull, Deputy Head Jackie Nichols has been carrying out an assessing pupil progress case study. In this four-part series, we're getting an up-close view of APP in action as Jackie gathers detailed evidence and diagnoses the strengths and weaknesses of six benchmark pupils. I'm beginning to build up a really good picture of what the children know, understand and can do. So far, Jackie's found out that there are gaps in her pupils' knowledge of key maths terms. So she tapped into her pupils' love of music to reinforce their maths vocabulary. What do you notice about those instruments? I don't know how to pronounce it, but is it congruent or something? Good girl, it is. Let's go over to This week, we find out how a real maths lesson outside the classroom can inspire leaps in the children's maths learning. How are we going to absolutely test and see if it is? Jackie gets feedback from her two APP maths consultants. He, um, without any hesitation, drew two shapes that were congruent, whilst the others were kind of thinking about what it meant. And discovers that one of her pupils is exceeding expectations. But what I've seen from this is actually that he's tipping into um, the above expectation in terms of his shape. And we'll be getting more tips from teachers around the country who've already tried APP. I absolutely do feel that my, my teacher assessment, my teacher judgments now are listened to. And so my teaching has become more flexible, if you like. I now adapt what I'm doing so that I'm going to teach to meet those gaps. My group, can I have you down here? So we have Luke, we have Jake, Sorry. we have Olivia, yes. we have Eleanor, we have Megan and Sam, we have Megan and we have Sam. Right, do we have a place where we think it would be really good for us to start because looking at the clock we've only got 15 minutes to gather our evidence. What's your idea? The trim trail. Outside next to the trim trail. So you'd like us to start outside next to the trim trail? Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Good team decision? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Today, Jackie is reinforcing her previous lessons on shape and measure, and she's challenged the pupils to find and photograph the shapes and angles they've been learning about. These will serve as inspiration for a piece of artwork they must then produce. We've been working in a very two-dimensional way, and yes, we've taken some of the learning into the music room and, and done it in a physical way, but actually taking it out into three dimensions into the real world is really important because that's the whole purpose of maths. Let's just go with Eleanor. Yeah, now, Eleanor well, seems right. to think that that might be a right angle there. How are we going to absolutely test and see if it is? We can't it's too high. It is quite high, isn't it? If you could stand on this. I can. So you've got two OK, let's just do one thing at a time, Luke. Oh, I still think, have we got anything else? Just have a look at the equipment we've got with us. Have we got? We've got the ruler. Earlier today, Jackie and her APP mentor Donna discussed how she'd be assessing her pupils in this lesson. So what's going to happen in the next lesson? I think it's important now um, that I, I really focus in on those benchmark children so that I get a gauge um, ac across the class, really. <laughs> Eleanor, Jake, Olivia, Megan, Luke and Sam span the various abilities within Jackie's class. We have triangles, which is the lowest group, which I used to be in, but Mrs Owen thought that I was too good for that group. Maths is not my really strongest subject, but I, really, I still do like it. I like maths because I'm in the top group and we have quite hard challenges and it's very fun, maths. I find it harder than most people. Now, what are we actually looking for? Um, uh, the right angle. The, the right, right. Angle. which bit of this ruler has got the right angle? There. OK, right, Eleanor, since you were the person who spotted it, would you like to hold that up there? I'll hold your clipboard. Or that's it you. for you. In this next lesson, Jackie is continuing to assess the progress of her benchmark pupils. I think that's pretty much there. Yeah. Right, so we've got right angle. So who is the one who spotted that one? Eleanor. We've got Eleanor. Now, with Eleanor, I think it's the accuracy. Mm -hmm. She can be quite quick to jump in, yeah. and she loves art, so I know she's going to be eager to get started on that. But I really need to rein her back and make sure that she's using the mathematical equipment rather than getting carried away with the, the artistic element. 
Right, now look at our list. We haven't got right angle there, but what can you see about that that we could use? I don't know about perpendicular. Cuts. We could use perpendicular. Why? Excellent. Yeah. Why could we use perpendicular, Eleanor? Could you explain uh, to Olivia why we could use this as an example of perpendicular? I'm not actually sure, really. I just um, I just looked at it and thought, oh, it's going to be perpendicular. Okay. What do we know about perpendicular okay. lines? Think about in our music, Luke, when we had the horizontal melody line coming through, what did Luke do with the drum coming down? I go down. Right, what do we call that? Vertical. Vertical. With Olivia, I know Olivia will be bubbling over with yeah. excitement and enthusiasm. And again, it's just making sure that the, the, there are strong foundations there for her understanding. It's more of a consistent understanding, isn't I it? Because so. sometimes it seems to be there and you think that she's got it and then in and another then situation, the it's not there. Yeah. So we're in search now of our quadrilateral. I saw a train that also has mini, because it's got mini quadrilaterals inside. Right, she's got an idea about the mini quadrilaterals inside. So let's see what she comes up with. Oh, wow. Right, that is really interesting. No one that gets blocked. Olivia, why did you choose and want to use this one? There's one big quadrilateral and then there's like loads of mini quadrilaterals inside. Fantastic. What else could we use it's this also, for? It's also a square itself. It is a square itself. What else on our sheet could we use this for? Um, we could put it in two categories here. Concurrent. Ah, oh, we could. Why could we use it? I think it was when we were taking the photos outside on the drain. There's like little squares and two lines meeting together and I think Olivia pointed that out that there's like little right angles in the corners and then I thought that I just went I oh, know what um per perpendicular means now. Luke can sometimes find it tricky to put all his ideas down and I'm actually hoping that this now will spur him on mm. and um, it'll be nice to see his creativity coming out through his artwork. There's something else we could use on this playground for congruence. No, tire wheels. What, what a great idea. Me? Let's go over to the tire wheels. Right, so Luke has spotted a fantastic place where we've got two examples of congruent. Mrs Nichols, I found something which is a cute angle. With Megan, um, I'd like today to see her being a little bit more assertive and to be the one that is coming up with the ideas and being more vocal. Um, I know she understands, but I'd like her to show that confidence mm -hmm. and that use of the vocabulary, certainly, to describe or to be able to identify the elements within her artwork. Do you think also you could pull out and try and tease out some of those um, names of 2D shapes? That was one of the things that she yes, said I think that she so. wanted to look at. Yes, this. definitely. On the way, it's one of these triangles. Just oh. one. If you have one, it's a cute. It's an acute. What about this seating area this here? Is right here? It's obtuse. Right, why is that obtuse? Because it's bigger than a right angle. Good girl. Now, in order to make sure that you are absolutely right, Megan, what do we need to do? Measure it. Measure it. Measure. Measure it. OK, Megan, have you got the equipment we need? Do you want to go round and have a look? OK. Do you have a handle? I found an obtuse angle, which was... Oh, is it? Yeah, obtuse angle, which is the bench in the shade shelter. It's like that, so it's obtuse. It's bigger than 90 degrees. Now tell me about those sides. Right, let's find out from Sam. Sam, could you tell me, um, is this a square? Uh, no. OK, so now explain how you know it's not a square. The sides aren't all equal. Good boy. Sam, what I want to see again is that use of language. I did no notice that he was struggling to attach mm. the words to help him explain what he meant. So whilst he could point out that there was a right angle, he was struggling then to explain how he knows it's a right angle. And I think it's that qualification. Mm -hmm. It's the giving, it's the reasoning, isn't it, behind Definitely. why he thinks uh, something is the way it is. And there's partial understanding there, isn't there? So if he's responding to something that you've asked for, it, there's a, there's yeah. an element of understanding, but it's securing that, isn't it? And then getting him to, to use that and apply it in yeah, different ways. I agree. Bit more information. Think about their lengths. The width of it is bigger than the uh, height of it. OK, so the length across the top is longer than Seven down the side. The so this would be an example of a quadrilateral, because what does quad mean? Four. 
Quad means four, and what does lateral mean? Shape. Not shape, but four... Sides. Sides. The photography session was, was a great one. I really enjoyed doing that, and I think it, it showed me the children were so fired up and motivated. I was pleased that I decided to get them to work strategically first, to actually go out and plan what they had to do, and it also made them aware that they had to justify why um, those two lines that meet are perpendicular, why should we choose that photograph to show uh, an obtuse angle. Right, that looks okay to me. She's zooming a bit. No, I think she's all right. And I think having that time and space with those six children to keep saying, but why, but why, and prove it to me, and what would you use to show me, and how would you convince, that was really important. Before we find out more about Jackie's latest evidence, how have other teachers found assessing with APP? The ability to be able to look at some examples that they've explored in a number pattern, for example, and then make generalisations, those are the kinds of skills that I really only had quite a vague understanding of where children were at before we did APP. And I feel that I know those children much better now, but I also think I need know the expectations, the assessment requirements much better now. So what you find is that very often children can do more than you think they can, uh, the other thing happens that you think they know something, that you've taught the lesson and ticked all the boxes for a lesson and then when they come to apply that they can't. So it's, it's helped at both ends of the scale really. I absolutely do feel that my um, teacher judgments are valued as part of this process. I think that I feel very empowered that I know these children, I teach them every day and all of the evidence and everything that I see um, that's in my head, that I've got written down photographs, everything, all my observations, all feed into um, assessing their progress. With time to reflect on her evidence so far, Jackie has decided to change her level judgement of one child in particular. When I look at Luke within the classroom, um, he's working in line with national expectations in terms of his number and computation. Um, and but what I didn't have enough information about was necessarily the, the shape and measures. But what I've seen from this is actually that he's tipping into um, the above expectation in terms of his shape, which is really encouraging to see. So it's given me a much broader picture of Luke's knowledge and understanding. And certainly from um, the activities that I did with them earlier, uh, Luke definitely shone out as, as knowing that and using that language. Mm. He was he talked about right angles, acute angles, obtuse angles. He um, without any hesitation drew two shapes that were congruent whilst the others were kind of thinking mm. about what it meant. I think the difference in my judgement from where I started um, before APP is that um, clearly Luke in terms of shape and measures um, is now is exceeding age related targets. Next time we find out more about APP and practice when teaching their parents inspires real confidence in the children. I don't know, Tommy. It has to make 180 80 degrees. degrees. And finally, Jackie's evidence goes in front of the moderation panel. So, for this one, I started putting insufficient evidence. 